With so many choices of what to buy, product designs and marketers are having to become increasingly insightful and innovative. At the same time, brands are more and more dominant in our lives and we often relate to them as if they were people. As we become more isolated and alienated and given that there's so much geographic mobility and people don't have their families around, etc., brands have become almost a substitute for relationships with other people. And so successful products appear as personalities. The clearer the brand character, the easier it is to develop a relationship with it. So not only are we connected to this brand and see it as an extension of ourselves, but we have a very strong, powerful feeling of affection toward it. Figuring out new ways to connect self-image with brand image has paved the way for the rebirth of the hundred-year-old theory of Jungian archetypes. Developed by Swiss psychiatrist Carl Jung, it suggests that universal, mythic characters hold the key to explaining our psyche. Jungian archetypes are these primordial images that Jung found that existed throughout cultures, throughout time. Um, an easy way to think about it is that they're this cast of characters that we recognize like outlaws and jesters and lovers. Each archetype has a clear set of subconscious values and instincts recognized by everyone. Outlaws, for example, like to challenge convention. Jesters are impulsive and spontaneous. Brands making use of this theory construct their products and marketing messages to appeal to these innate personalities. It's not just about the emotional connection, it's also this idea that you are um, help be, that people want to become their ideal sense of self and so brands or products that are a manifestation of that ideal self are ones that are very compelling to consumers. One global marketing consultancy exploring the role of Jungian archetypes is Added Value, whose clients include AT&T, Harley-Davidson, Pepsi and Coke, along with many car manufacturers. We use archetypes in a number of different ways for our clients. Uh, one key way, of course, is helping them uncover and explore who their archetype is. Uh, we also use archetypes to help them manage the brand in making sure that the various touch points and ways in which consumers interact with the brand are on point and reinforcing that archetype. Yamaha Motors used added value and their archetypes to determine the design of a power sport vehicle that would be used to attract customers who are new to this genre. We took a lot of the keywords that they used and we put together sort of a design brief or basically a uh, uh, collection of images and words that we took to our designers and from there then they really started working on a, a design that could visualize these abstract concepts. Development on Yamaha's project was postponed due to the economic downturn, but Takamoto and his colleagues are nonetheless excited by the new approach. This type of research really helped us get away from the, the standard demographic approach where you're just looking at, you know, he's a male, 35 years old, and he has two kids. Uh, how do we develop a product for him? You know, getting deeper into what he really is looking for uh, helps us better make a, an emotional connection uh, to that customer and really design a product that they're going to be excited about. But not everyone is convinced archetypes are the best way to go. Some continue to take a more grounded and precise approach to figuring out what people want. I think there's often a, a hypothesis out there that the deep analysis is, is really through qualitative research. The fact is you can get incredibly deep information about probably people's deepest and darkest secrets by using quantitative data. Into the four time period. Lieberman Research Worldwide does in-depth interviews with consumers to help companies understand their customers and more importantly their customers micro behaviors very specific experiences people have in a consumer context. Uh, consumers wouldn't have much of an ability to tell us about what really drove their behavior but by amassing a, a huge data set and by systematically digging in that data we're able to find relationships between uh, the micro behaviors and then what actually happens in terms of spending and satisfaction. So we can turn around and model that back for our clients. By using technology to drive consumer research, firms like Lieberman are able to use comparisons and models to determine why consumers make the decisions they do. This wasn't possible 20 years ago. The way that we can use consumer psychology, use these quantitative models, has really evolved with technology uh, because now we've got the, both the computing power and then the, the people with the skills to do it. Archetypes and computer technology represent both the art and the science of consumer psychology, new ways to tap into the workings of our inner consumer. Let the buyer beware.